So I'm trying to work through some of the questions that I get frequently about teaching and what I do and today we are going to talk about test corrections or what I do when my students don't do well on their exam. So first I'll talk through what I've tried in the past, how that went, and why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So initially I started out doing test corrections where students would correct the missed questions on their test. I'm now back to that, so I'll go into more detail on that toward the end, but I wanted to go through everything else that I tried first. So I've also tried giving students a retest where they redo the test. So I would give them a new version of the test, and typically for tests I create two versions of the exam so that there's different answers, different numbers, slightly variated questions, and that is hopefully to help deter or reduce cheating. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depends on lots of other things. That's probably a separate conversation. But I usually do two versions of tests and initially when I was doing retests I would give students the opposite version that they didn't take the first time. And that makes perfect sense except when they go to do the retest both versions of the test are already floating out there so I ended up also creating a third version of the test specifically for retests, which at the time seemed like a lot of work. But now that I'm looking back on it, now that I've had years of teaching geometry, I feel like it's not that hard to make up a third version. Like it's definitely more work. You definitely have to put more thought into it. But now that I've been teaching it for so long, it's easier for me to come up with questions than it was in the past. So what I would do was take the original test and the retest, average them together, and that would be the student's grade on that exam provided that the retest would raise the grade. If not, I wouldn't count it against them, obviously. But here's why this didn't work. Students would typically perform about the same on the retest as they did on the original test, unless they did a lot of work to really study and prepare for the retest, like coming in for extra help, coming to see me, whatever it is that they had to do, unless they were doing that, it pretty much gave them the same exact results. So I was not into that option at all. The next thing that I tried was having students correct tests as a sort of passport to be able to take a retest. This was a whole complicated procedure and it was something that was proposed by my administrator at the time because he felt that students should not be able to pass the course if they failed the state exam. So yeah, he really thought that a student's efforts on a three-hour exam should equate to their efforts throughout the entire school year. So what he told me to do that year, and I did it, did as I was told, was to do this whole crazy calculation. So they would take the original test, then they would do test corrections, then they could take the retest. And the calculation was that their final grade was 50% of the score of the original test. 25% on the test corrections, and then 25% on the retest. Now, the 25% on test corrections was always like full credit, if because you know they're either doing it and they're not. They need to get the test corrections completely correct to be able to take the retest. So that was like an automatic 25 points, which that's not what bothers me. What bothered me with this whole situation was it was a long, drawn out process. Like students had to take the tests. I had to wait for students that were absent to make up the tests. Then I had to have to pass the tests back. Students would have to do test corrections. Then they would have to schedule a time for a retest. Oh, and I'd also have to grade the test corrections in between and then go back and forth with them to make sure that the test corrections were completely correct. So yeah, that was a nightmare. Now, overall, it makes complete sense. And in a perfect world, that's what I would love to do is have students correct their test and then try again but it was just a logistical nightmare. And on top of that, students weren't able to do this during class, like we don't have time for all of that. So if they were doing test corrections and retests, it had to be on their own time. So if our students don't have a study hall or you know time at home to do all of this, it just wasn't happening or getting done. So yeah, all these years later, you can tell I'm still really annoyed that this happened. And so that brings us to where I am now, which we just do test corrections because it meets in the middle of it's not a nightmare. It's pretty simple to carry out. Students are able to still relearn the materials. I get a chance to reteach where I need to. 
it's just the best of both worlds. So I love doing the test corrections the way that I've been doing it. So for test corrections, I give my students a form and this is it. So at the top, there are directions. I'm going to read them. So it says before handing in your test corrections, make sure you have completed the checklist. They have to do every problem that was marked incorrect. On the board, I go through like how to know how your test was graded because multiple choice, I'll do like a slash to the number, but if it's partial credit, I'm doing minus however many points they lost. Work needs to be neat and organized, AKA it needs to be on this form. Their error codes need to be filled in. I'll explain that in a minute. Their original test has to be stapled to the form because they need to be able to see what it looked like originally. And I want them to check over their new solutions. So the form has a space for the problem number, a space for them to show work, and then a space for an error code, which is at the bottom. So it's a list of things that could have possibly gone wrong when they were taking their test. There are things like didn't follow directions didn't know how to do the problem, didn't study, didn't show the appropriate work, computational errors, sign mistakes. So all that is in there so that they can report, self-report like what happened when they were taking their test. So I tell them that I need a form because I don't want them writing on their original test. I want them to have that so that they can see their mistakes and to make it easier on me to grade so I don't have to hunt through their original test to find what ones they fixed, what ones they didn't. And it gets confusing because what they'll do is erase what was wrong and then over top of it, like write out their new work and it's just hard to tell what's actually happening there. So having it on a separate piece of paper makes it so much easier for me to find their corrections. So then what I'll do is I'll have a day of class after the test, usually a couple days after so that students that were absent could get caught up and make up their test. But I'll have a day where we are just doing test corrections that gives them a chance to kind of take a breather and just focus on this one thing so we're not trying to cram anything else in on that day and we just do the test corrections it also allows them to work together they can collaborate one of the things that I suggest they do before turning it in is check over their new solutions because if they turn in their test corrections and their problem is still wrong they're not getting any points back so even with multiple versions there will be someone else in the room lots of other people that had the same test as them so they could check over with a a friend or something to make sure that they're turning in something that's correct. I also project the test, both versions on the board. So if there's anything that was like a, a huge miss across the whole class, we can talk about it together. And then I open it up for, do you want me to work through a problem with you on the board so that everyone else benefits? And we do that too, but sometimes certain classes that's like pulling teeth. So I will kind of go up knowing that these questions we really need to talk about together and I need to like completely reteach. Um, so that's basically what we do. And as far as their credit back to them, what I do is give them back half the credit that they lost. And so I go through a whole calculation with them every time that if you got an 80, you can get back up to a 90. If you got a 60, you could get to an 80. If you got a 30, you can get to a 65, which is the benchmark for passing in my school. So I always tell them like, as long as you can get a 30 on the test, you can correct it up to a 65. I know some people are kind of like sticklers where they wouldn't even want to offer this option, but I would rather my students learn no matter what. So even though it's like a corrected test grade and some people might even argue that it's slightly inflated in that way. I'd rather that happen than them just not do well and not really try to do anything to learn the material. For them, it's about fixing their grade, but for me, it's about I want them to learn the material. Now, this form is intended for math teachers, but if you're looking for a test corrections form specifically for math teachers, I will link mine below. It is available in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. And there's also a digital version, so if you are still using Google Forms or something like that for tests, there's a Google Form version of the test corrections form, which can be convenient. Personally, I'm definitely a pencil and paper person, so I will stick to paper, but that option is available as well. And that's everything for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.